there, my name is Dr. Katie Sink and this video is about instructional control and rapport building. So these two things go together because without either one of them, it can be hard to be productive and have a good relationship. So instructional control is an ABA term for how well does the client or child listen to authority figures. And so if you have good instructional control, that means you can create a learning opportunity and the child will be willing to participate and listen and engage in that activity. And so ideally, as a parent or a therapist, we would have high levels of instructional control. And a lot of that would be based in how good your rapport is with the child. So let's go ahead and take a minute to self-evaluate. How good of instructional control do you think that you have with the children you interact with? When you give them directions or when you want to sit down with them and do a learning activity, how well do they listen and interact and how willing are they to engage in that activity? If you're answering not very willing and it's pretty hard for them to comply or listen or attend, there's a few things you can do to help with that. So first, let's look at your relationship with them. Sometimes as parents or therapists, we give a lot of directions and a lot of directives. Do this, do that, do this, do that. And if, if we do that too often, it can really hurt our relationship. There's something called a conditioned reinforcer or a conditioned punisher. And so we will become either one of those based on our interactions. And so we try to follow the 80-20 rule where 80% of your interactions are positive or at least neutral. And then 20% can be in the um, aversive side where you know, you're maybe telling them what to do or kind of pushing them outside of their comfort zone. So the research shows us that if we stay within this, this ratio, we will be a conditioned reinforcer. The kid will like us, they will have a good relationship with us, we'll have that rapport. And so once you start to get outside of that window um, where um, there's a lot of negative interactions and it's more than the 20%, that's when we start to um, become a conditioned punisher. And in this situation, punisher is being used loosely as an ABA term to mean basically something they don't like. Um, so anything that that is punishing just means they don't like it. It's, it's not fun for them. They don't enjoy it. So if we are always giving our kids directions and always um, being stern and, and not connecting with them, not having fun with them, we're going to be a conditioned punisher and they're going to be motivated to avoid us. They're going to be less likely to listen to us. So if we want to have instructional control, if we want to have a good relationship with our kiddos, then we need to work on this ratio. We need to find ways to bond with them, to have fun, to do things just for the fun of it so that we can connect and we can become a conditioned reinforcer. Once you have this trust and this relationship, it is much easier and the child is more willing to do a lot of things with you and for you. And so this can help them learn and grow versus if they're always avoiding you because they think you you represent work or you know doing a lot of non-preferred things, it's gonna be much harder. So next thing I want you to think about is just how good is your follow through when giving demands? So a piece of instructional control is that the child learns that when you say it's time to clean up, you actually mean it and you'll follow through. And so if the child has learned that your pattern is to say it's time to clean up, but then you get busy and you forget to follow through and, and make sure they cleaned up, then it's pretty unlikely they're going to listen and you won't have much instructional control because they've learned that even though you maybe tell them what to do, you don't always follow through and you, they don't actually have to listen. So that's where coming up with contingencies and 
following through with everything you say can really, really help. If you're consistent with when you tell um, a child to do something and they learn every time she says, it's time to do this or you need to turn that off, she follows through and she makes me do it, then kids aren't going to question it. They're just going to listen because that is a predictable pattern. And so when we're consistent in this way, it actually reduces anxiety. So sometimes kids produce anxiety when parents are inconsistent or therapists are inconsistent because they don't know what to expect. Like this time, am I going to have to listen? Can I argue my way out of this? Can I have a problem behavior to distract from this and get my way? You know, it, it creates a lot of question marks where if their world is predictable, that is much easier to deal with. It lowers your anxiety. You're more likely to follow through because this is something I've experienced many times before and it always turns out the same. So this can bring peace to your home as well. And this also helps with rapport. When you are consistent with your interactions, the child knows what to expect, they feel safer, and so then it, it helps them connect with you. If you're unpredictable, then they maybe will not feel safe and that rapport is gonna be a little bit more difficult. So after thinking about uh, the different things in this video, reflect on what would be helpful for you. Do you need more bonding time with your child so that you have a better connection with them? Can you squeeze in maybe five or 10 minutes a day extra where you can just connect with them? Or even if it's once a week, you have extra quality time that you could add in. You know, is that your action step that you feel like would be really helpful? Or do you feel like the piece that you need to work on is consistency and follow through? Does the children that you interact with believe that when you say it's time to clean up or be done or whatever, that you'll follow through with that? So uh, think about how good your ratio is of, um, are you in that 80 to 20 zone? And think about how your follow through is and see if there's some things that maybe you could do to increase rapport and instructional control. All right, thanks for listening.